And now we are going to talk about talk some more actually about that greatness in Nigerian music. We've been talking about different artists taking Afro <clears throat> bits to the world. And today, one of the guests, the guest on my show today, rather, Iman Say, is one of the female artists doing just that. And it's interesting because we have a funny story together. But before I tell you that story, I'm going to bring Iman Say into the conversation live from our Lagos studio, the creative powerhouse that is Iman Say. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. Hi. <laughs> Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. How are you? I'm fantastic, Iman. So let me tell you a funny story, right? And I promise you, I've had so oh many my gosh, moments. Okay. I've had so many moments where I just think to myself, never in my life. I had that moment today. I literally had a moment like that today where I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. People, do, and you know, the song in itself, and I just want to go straight to it because I mean, you released this beautiful song. It was all over social media. I did a video to it when I bought hair mm -hmm. that was 350,000 for 700,000 because I didn't know. And I'm just like, never in my life again. Everyone had a story that could relate to either being cheated or being scammed or being lied to. And we just tell ourselves, never in my life i want to know why you wrote that song because now you are like the most relatable woman out there because you just put it out there for all of us <laughs> well um being a female in the industry hasn't been a walk in the park let's just say that you know that i'm up against you know tough men creative men talented men so many amazing creatives and you know the a country like nigeria where you know, honesty and integrity isn't like the, you know, flying banner running around. Things are going to happen where you, you're going to get cheated. Nigeria is like a, you know, get or get got, you know, take or be taken, like eat or be eaten type of society in a way. Like it's a hustle, you know, like don't close your, don't sleep with two eyes closed. If you do, you know, you're going to get, you're, things are going to move, you know. And I mean, I've had so many experiences from moving back. You know, I, I, I kind of, grew up partly in Lagos and then partly in America. And then when I first moved back to Nigeria, I'd go to events, right? I lost three cell phones at events. Like proper world-class high-level events. I would carry, I would, you know, have those handbags. And by the middle of the event, my phone would be missing. I, I went to the airport one time, my phone was missing. Like it took a while for me to kind of get adjusted to how things flow in Nigeria and getting cheated here and there. Because I still kind of had like a very idealistic fairy tale view on life and i just thought you know what um people are not as bad you know just be a little more trusting oh more nigeria showed me the opposite and you know they say a they say a good heart always gets broken um i believe that you don't run around in nigeria with too much of a good heart because you're gonna get broken cheated so many things and i, I just had too many experiences and the day i went in the studio to, to make that record. When I heard the first chord on the guitar and I just started singing, never in my life, never in my life. Like I knew immediately that, that that stuff was coming from such a deep place, you know? So that's, that's really where this whole thing started. Like it was, it was a culmination of many experiences from living in Nigeria that made me write that song. I even have part two, stay tuned. I have part two, stay tuned. <laughs> I have to just say this, and, and, and we have a lot to talk about, but I really wanted to start out this conversation on this note because I want you to know that it's very rare for you to find a song that every human being can relate to. It's just like Libyanka's people. There's not a lot of songs like that, and you release that yeah. song, and it's a global song. That's why I called it the queen of relatability. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to hear the song because I can feel it so strongly. I feel like I should hear it again. And then we're going to come back and pick up on this conversation. Okay, guys, here is <laughs> Never In My Life. If you haven't heard it before, sure. I promise you, you can. My people. Our mumu don't do. There you have it. Beautiful, beautiful song. So I want us to touch on what you said earlier about being a female artist in Nigeria, because the reality is I was asked, I was having this conversation with my sister the other day and she was like, had she mentioned like five, you know, of, for each tribe, just mention five artists that are just doing fantastic. 
And I noticed that in every five artists I would mention, there would always be at least two or three male artists because, ah, how many, okay, if I want to say Igbo art, like when I say doing really good, I'm talking international, international level, like, you know, performing at the Ballon d'Ors and performing at the Coronations and performing at the big <laughs> shows, stuff like that. And I was, I was asking myself, I was like, we do have these artists. Imante, you're a fantastic artist. You're a fantastic voice. This song could as well be performed on any Thank of these you. stages. So what are, we not, what are we not seeing or what is the world not seeing? What are we missing for you as an artist? What do you think the problem is? So thank you for that question. Um, I think, you know, it's fantastic to come on here and promote my music, but I need to talk about a lot of the different issues that are happening behind the scenes, especially that's keeping us women behind. You know, I could go into a lot of deals that have happened where a woman can do like maybe 80% of the work, then a man takes credit for it. You know what I mean? And you know, women now, we're designed to like, you know, we, we, get, we can get tired and we can't fight a certain way. You get, so let's talk about funding. Let's talk about capital. Let's talk about, okay, for every hundred dollars that comes into the creative economy, what's the percentage coming to women? I'm thinking that's like maybe 10, 20. If we're, if we're getting only 20% of every hundred dollars that's coming into the creative economy, we're never going to catch up. You're going to have artists like me who we're great, we're dope, we can, we, can, we can stand on any stage in the world, but then we don't have the financial support to get things done. I mean, music videos are shot with money. Studio time is paid for with money. Um, PR, digital marketing, you know, all kinds of things are being paid for with money, right? So if I don't have the budget, how am I going to compete? How am I going to stand strong as an artist? I know a lot of female artists who started this game with me, who are no longer making music because they couldn't afford to keep up. You know what I mean? And then the deals for female artists. People are always quick to say, oh, she's going to get married and get out of the game. Oh, she's going to this. Oh, she's too emotional. Oh, she's too irrational. The things that make our strength up, what the things that, you know, music comes from an emotional place. How can you hate the thing that makes the music? How can you hate the people that make the music? You know what I mean? So I just feel like, Female artists need to be more supported. I want to call on record label executives to look into the budgets for female artists. I want to call on creatives in Nigeria who are ahead of me, who have bigger platforms to speak about this issue. I want to call on them to say, you know what, what can we do to get the females to level up? Out of every 10 male artists that are making waves, you can struggle to call like two artists. We're, 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 not, we're not getting what we need. That's why people are saying stuff like, I mean, sometimes I even hear stuff I got about myself. Oh, she's not consistent enough. Oh, she's not putting out music enough. Do you know the inner workings of what it takes to put out a record? There's so many layers, there's so many details that goes into making a record, number one, putting out a record. And for someone like me, who wears many hats in my business, I am an independent artist. I own a record label. So I wear the hats of a creative, I have to do budgeting, I have to do, you know, so many different departments. So I can't even just focus on being a creative. I keep saying this a lot to my team. I have a small team I work with. I always say that I wish, I don't even know what it feels like to just be a creative because I have to handle the business side and then have to come back and work on the creative just to keep this dream alive. Because if I couldn't handle both, I wouldn't even still be standing here making music. We wouldn't even be talking about music that I'm putting out soon or the album that I have coming, like we wouldn't even be talking about that. A lot of people have bowed out gracefully because they, don't, they just can't keep up. They just can't do it anymore. So I want to ask like, everyone who's, who stands in the way of a female, who you know, makes things a little more difficult, who asks for impossible requirements for her to get a deal, please stop it. Leave the doors open so that we can cross and we can be more, that, you know, more of what we need to be. There are a lot of, there's so much female talent in Nigeria, but then what, there's like a, a few powerhouses. No, we should have many powerhouses. In, in America, we have Beyonce, we have Rihanna, we have even go to the older people, Madonna, Celine Dion, like across age groups, across the, the age divide in, in the women, you know, sector. There's yeah. so many powerhouses People who can stand on their own and go on tour, Alicia Keys, Jasmine Sullivan, yeah. even if they're not like A-list, even yeah. a D-list um, musician in America is, 
is cashing out. I want, to, I want there to be that balance in the industry but you know, here. Some people would say there's always... Let me, let, me, let, me, let me put it this way. I have a friend of mine, a female artist, and she had issues with her label. And one of the things she always said mm -hmm. to me was, because I was like, babe, listen, we need to call this person out. Like, you can't do this. You know, you're... You, you, you know that thing where you're in, a, you're in a label and then, you know, they're meant to fund, give you some certain funds and then you're not getting it and then you're not putting out music and then they're stifling your growth for selfish personal reasons. It happens to a lot of artists, but with female artists, mm -hmm. what I often hear them say is, ah, I beg, well, I'll just let it go because if I start to fight now, they'll start blacklisting me in this industry. Some people will say women are not as daring with the industry as a lot of the men are. You know, that for these same people, and I'm not trying to compare you know, how easy it is, because you already put out the statistic around if every $100 comes in, 20 is just for the women and men still have 80. But it's like the challenges that these guys are going through as well, they find a way to slug it out, but we are easy to just say, you know what, I beg, I beg. Let me just look for another way out of it. What do you have to say to that? Um, I've been through a lot, but I don't come out to come and talk about every single thing I've been through, you know, so I don't think we take an easy way out because if it was about easy way out, do you, like I've actually even threatened to quit music a couple of times, you know, in fact, I, I still said that like recently. So, but I say it and I guess what I go back to the studio to make another record. So it just shows that. Yes, it's tough and it's, it's so annoying sometimes that you just want to throw in the towel. But I don't think, I feel like we deal with different kinds of issues that men do. And I'm not trying to downgrade the issues that men are going through. Because I know many you know, guys in record labels also come out and say they're going through this, they're going through that. I mean, rest his soul. Look at what happened to like, a, you know, Mobad, for instance. You know what I mean? So I know that guys also go through stuff. I'm not trying to, you know, decrease one person's um, issue from another person but I feel like if a woman is saying oh you know what maybe this person is saying oh I want to have something to do with you before I release the funds well for the most part a guy's not gonna have to deal with that if he's talented then he's gonna just have to sing his music and get his funding and be on his merry way I feel like there are a lot of unique obstacles for women and yes when the unique obstacles keep occurring there's so much when you know that okay there's no road here no matter what you do even if you call out somebody okay if you call them out maybe you're going to get blacklisted if you don't call them out your 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 career is going to die anyways the, the best thing to do is maybe go do something else where there's less roadblocks for women so i think it's wisdom to know when to stop fighting and it's wisdom to know when to back out from something you know what i mean so Believe i think me. that's what it is i don't think that we don't want to fight. We want to fight and we are fighting. Some of us are still standing here despite the obstacles. I love that. Now, Iman say, let's talk about that funding. You know, um, I've heard a lot of people say they have just abandoned anything that will put them on record label matter together. That's a matter of fact, it's now artists just doing their own thing. And I know it's expensive. So how does it work for an artist who's saying right now, I have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful friend. Her name is Am Amaya. She just put out this song, um, I Was On My Own, and it was trending on social media. And when I looked at her, I was saying to myself that this girl has such a oh. beautiful voice that I just wish someone would hear her song and just pick it up and just put it out there. But then we have a lot of stories like this independent artist. They just release a song. It gets the buzz on social media, but it doesn't get the right marketing. It doesn't get the right promotion. It doesn't get the right, you know, um, A&R. So... Seeing as that's the space we are in now, how do we go about this? What is the solution? Because we, we, we've identified the issues, then we need to also talk about possible solutions to these issues. Well, um, solutions I'd suggest, I mean, for independent artists is um, maybe try to make connections with record labels. Now, people, people, everyone says they want to go independent, but being independent is not so fun and it's not so easy. You know, this is talking from a record label exec herself. It's not so fun. It's not so easy. If I had a choice to be managed by someone or be managed by a label, I would gladly go in there. Why? Because there's so many things that make a superstar. So you having a lovely song and trending is not enough to make a superstar. You know what I mean? A record label has connections that you don't have. A record label has some 
inroads when it comes to pr promotions that you may not have access to. A record label has access to statistics and data that can move or shape in how your song is being promoted, that can kind of burst you out from a local artist to a global artist. So there's a lot of things that a record label can bring to your table that, that, that makes you a superstar. They have branding teams, they have PR teams, they have marketing teams, they have um, social etiquette teams. They have, they have a, a weapon you know, at their arsenal. Sorry, they have a, a, you know, a lot in their arsenal um, sorry to say that. Yeah, so you know what I mean? Um, I feel like if you're lucky enough to do a lot of networking with labels, then you can maybe get advice from the ARs in their corporations and see if they can take you on. If they don't take you on, keep doing your thing on your own. But if you're lucky to make good connections, develop your skill more. So another thing I want to say is artist development. A label is only going to back someone who can also prove good numbers. Everyone wants to see that you can stream 10 million, 25 million, or whatever you can do on your own is, is catchy enough. Do you get? So try to work in the absence of a big label, in absence of you getting that big break. Keep developing your skill. Keep promoting yourself because that's the best you can do. You know, you can't do what you can't do. And then if you're blessed enough to network yourself properly, you can get yourself onto a platform. Auntie, I wanted to talk about you. We've had, we've, we've, we've given enough tips and tricks for one day. I heard you, I heard you say something <laughs> about like wanting to leave us in the music space. Imante, first of all, I'm not one to tell people like do this, do that. I'm one to tell people do you, but no dear, no. No, we're not doing that, dear. We'll see, girl. Talk to me about <laughs> if, this, though. If what's, I'm able what's... to keep pulling it off, <laughs> then we'll make it happen. <laughs> but really, what's with you? Like, where are you right now when it comes to music? You know, I mean, where would you say you are? What, what space would you say you're in at the moment when it comes to your music? So, um, I have a new record coming out, actually. Um, November 3rd, I have a song called Jara featuring the Yababuluku boys. I'm sure you know Yababuluku. Yababuluku, you know. So I have Jara coming out in maybe three days. And I have an album, actually. It was meant to come out November 6, 2023, but we're looking at January 5th, 2024. Um, af after this project, I'm thinking of going behind the scenes a little bit, but I'm not sure yet. Like, you know, if I have more... more um, projects to work on if i have the right backing if i have the right funding i can put out maybe two more projects i think i have like two more projects in me but without the right backing and funding i can you know drop this project and see all the opportunities there are a lot of opportunities on the behind the scenes and i and i really love to hook Choose artists with, up with record deals so you know if you're an artist you're looking for a record deal i'm your girl you know we can work it out blah blah, blah. i really love just helping other people get closer to their dreams, you know, while I'm trying to build my dreams. So, yeah, if, if, you, if you speak into the light and I get a big bag, then you can get two more projects. But if you don't, then we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Listen, Imanse, I feel like the most important thing today for me is what you've just said about as much as you're trying to also push out and get your own dreams, you're happy helping other people as well. And that, for me, makes me understand that there's nothing dark about your pace you are just doing music the way you want to and you're not being you know swayed by what people say or what the space is saying it's just you doing you imante doing imante and i really really admire that so thank you for that and thank you so much for joining thank me you. on arise 360 today this is a fantastic conversation